So we will now start with the other two nonlinear uh, effects that affect uh, our uh, data propagation through the optical fiber. And uh, these two nonlinear scattering effects are uh, the Raman scattering and the uh, Brillouin scattering. Uh, in fact, in a fiber, an optical fiber poses uh, three types of scattering. Uh, the Rayleigh scattering we have already seen before. Uh, this is primarily because of the uh, inhomogeneities in the fiber fabrication. So, what I am marking here is the core of the fiber and some uh, inhomogeneities or uh, discrete scatterers in the uh, along the length of the fiber. So, when light is incident uh, in the fiber, uh, these particles or these inhomogeneities uh, pose as scattering centers and light gets scattered in different uh, directions. And uh, fiber of course, we know that the light in a single mode fiber especially we know that uh, there are only two possible uh, ray paths, one is in the forward direction, the other is in the backward direction. Right. Uh, so, you uh, the, the scattered light gets captured either in the forward direction or it gets captured in the backward direction. Uh, so, with the result that uh, because some amount of scattering, some amount of light is uh, lost in the backward direction, uh, at the end of the fiber you have uh, if P naught is your input, you have only P naught e power minus alpha z and this alpha uh, quantifies the attenuation coefficient. This we have seen earlier and we also saw that this Rayleigh scattering uh, is the primary reason for uh, attenuation and uh, the Rayleigh scattering, the strength of scattering is inversely proportional to the lambda power 4 and so we have attenuation somewhere minimum at 1550 nanometer and so on. But the point to note is that uh, if the input wavelength is let us say lambda, the scattered light also has a wavelength uh, lambda, there is no wavelength shift, which means that there is no energy transfer to the medium and from the medium. So, that way this scattering is uh, what is called as an elastic scattering process. But unlike this uh, Rayleigh scattering, the Raman and Brillouin scattering processes are because uh, of some inelastic processes. Now, the word inelastic would mean that the incoming light, the incoming electromagnetic wave either loses energy to the medium or it gains energy from the medium. So, uh, the energy of the scattered light is not the same as the energy of the uh, incoming light. Now, there are fun two fundamental differences between uh, Brillouin scattering and uh, Raman scattering. Both are uh, inelastic scattering uh, processes, uh, but in Brillouin scattering, uh, the scattering process is because of the interaction of light uh, with uh, acoustic phonons. Now, what are acoustic phonons? Uh, these are quanta of uh, acoustic vibrations. So, these are quanta of acoustic vibrations and the origin of uh, Brillouin scattering is uh, you can associate it with the tendency of the material to get compressed uh, whenever there is a pressure uh, or even temperature applied on the system. And you do not have to really apply a pressure or temperature even the atmospheric temperature conditions or the environmental temperature conditions and the uh, pressure vibration conditions are sufficient enough to uh, initiate the scattering process. So, what happens here is along the uh, core of the fiber, there are these thermal fluctuations and these thermal fluctuations is what these thermal fluctuations, the quanta of thermal fluctuations are these acoustic phonons. Uh, they are propagating in random directions and our uh, incoming electromagnetic wave interacts with these thermal fluctuations 
of the medium and this results in the scattered light and that is Brillouin scattering. Whereas in uh, Raman scattering, the, we, this relates to the interaction of light with uh, molecular or lattice uh, vibrations. These atoms in a, a given uh, molecule are located at specific lattice points and they would be vibrating and these vibrational uh, states of these molecules. Uh, in, so, so, the incoming electromagnetic wave interacts with these vibrational states of these molecules and that results in the transfer of energy of the electromagnetic wave to these vibrational energies essentially to these molecules or you could have the incoming electromagnetic wave interacting with a vibrating molecule resulting in the transfer of energy from the molecule to the electromagnetic wave so that the resultant or the scattered uh, photon will have a larger energy and hence a larger frequency. Both are possible in case of uh, Raman scattering. So, if, uh, so, so the essential difference is the Raman scattering happens when the photon or the electromagnetic wave interacts with individual molecules whereas um, Brillouin scattering happens when the uh, photon or the electromagnetic wave interacts with the acoustic waves of the system. right? So, uh, because Brillouin scattering is a process involving interaction of waves we talk about phase matching conditions in Brillouin scattering, whereas in Raman scattering it is interaction with molecules. So, it is uh, interaction of light with the medium directly. So, there is no phase matching involved. It is only energy uh, matching conditions that are involved. Uh, Raman scattering by because of the same uh, uh, reason we will realize that Raman scattering occurs in all directions whereas Brillouin scattering there are because of the phase matching there are certain uh, allowed directions for Brillouin scattering uh, as compared to Raman scattering. Both of this however leads to what are called as stimulated processes. Now stimulated scattering uh, is a process that results from a positive feedback. So the system, uh, the fiber by default has its acoustic phonons or its acoustic vibrations, it has molecular vibrations. Uh, your incoming light interacts with acoustic phonons giving rise to Brillouin scattering, it interacts with uh, molecular vibrations giving rise to Raman scattering. Uh, that spontaneous process, spontaneous is something that happens on its own. But uh, as your input power increases, as your intensity increases, as the strength of the electric field increases, what happens is uh, the process becomes suddenly a stimulated process, whereby uh, the spontaneous process actually results in a positive feedback uh, resulting in the fact that, so how do you identify whether it is a stimulated process? The power of the scattered photon uh, will start growing exponentially beyond what is called as a threshold. So, whenever your incoming uh, light uh, intensity or power, uh, so this is P scattered, whether it is Raman or uh, Brillouin, the process is the sa same, uh, sorry, the behavior is the same. For low in input power levels, you will have spontaneous Raman scattering, spontaneous Brillouin scattering, of course, we will always have uh, Rayleigh scattering. Uh, but as your input power crosses what is called as a, a threshold power, the scattered power starts uh, rising exponentially as a function of z. So, as a function of uh, input power, you will start seeing some very steep increase similar to the threshold of the laser. So, this is, uh, this is your stimulated scattering uh, phenomena. How stimulated scattering happens is uh, slightly different in both the cases, we will talk about it in detail. So, the fundamental difference between uh, uh, the, the Rayleigh scattering, Raman scattering and Brillouin scattering is that in case of uh, Rayleigh and Raman, 
it is interaction with local inhomogeneities or you know local scattering centers. But in case of uh, uh, Rayleigh scattering, if lambda is your input uh, light, uh, wavelength of the input light, the scattered light also has the same wavelength. In case of Raman scattering, the scattered light could be of a larger wavelength or it could be of smaller wavelength. Right? So, this is uh, Raman scattering. Uh, this is the Stokes phenomena and whenever you have energy transferred from the medium to the electromagnetic wave uh, so that the resultant scattered light has more frequency, then it is an anti-Stokes phenomenon. Now, uh, in case of Brillouin scattering, uh, typically in an optical fiber, we will prove why you will always have uh, the scattered light uh, whose wa the wavelength of the scattered light is always larger than the wavelength of the uh, input light. So, this is uh, Brillouin scattering. So, for an input lambda, the signature of Raman could be on either side and the signature of Brillouin scattering is typically in, in an optical fiber. Of course, uh, solids and liquids, uh, you know, as a bulk solid and liquid materials would show Brillouin scattering where you could have a Stokes and an anti-Stokes Brillouin. But as far as a fiber is concerned, you typically have only uh, Stokes scattering. Uh, 